Okay guys, so we're set up here and we're going to see how we can encrypt some data using the public key of a public private asymmetric key pair that we have created by using the certificate key and trust services provided in iOS. So what we're looking at on screen is the viewcontroller.m file for this particular Xcode project and I'll quickly bring you up to speed on what we have done already. You can see here, I have two strings, public key identifier and private key identifier, which are used to help us identify our public and private keys that we have created and stored already in the iOS keychain. To create that key value pair, I have used a method here that I'm calling create key pair. You can see it's called right away in my view did load. And as I mentioned, even though this method is going to be storing our asymmetric key pair in the iOS keychain, to keep things simple in this create key pair method, I've also set up my public and private keys to be referred to by our instance variables here, public key reference and private key reference, so they're easily available in this particular demo. Finally, you can see I'm setting up an instance of NS data here, calling it encrypted data. And as you might guess, this is where we're going to store the data that we encrypt using the public key. So knowing that our key pair, our asymmetric key pair is already created and we have the public key of that pair in our public key reference, we're going to call this method here encrypt message to actually see how we can encrypt a message using that key. If I were to scroll a bit further down, you can see all we're doing to get us started inside of encrypt message is making sure our reference to the public key is not null. And if it's not, then we're going to jump in here and see how we can use this public key to encrypt some data. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to set up some data that we can actually encrypt, as well as I'm going to set up a variable that's going to hold the length of that data. You can see here, my data to encrypt is a string. This is my sample message. And then I'm going to set up this variable here, data length, using our string to encrypt. You'll notice on this very first line, I'm actually going to get a local reference to our public key, and I'm just calling that public key. So moving on, I'm going to set up a few more variables here. So the first is a variable for cipher buffer size. The next is a variable for cipher buffer. The cipher buffer is where we're going to store the data that has been encrypted. You can see I'm going to set my cipher buffer size by using the security key get block size and passing in my public key. And I'm going to allocate some memory for my cipher buffer based on that size. Next, I'm going to make sure that my buffer size is not too small for the data we are trying to encrypt. And if it is in this simple function in this simple demo, I should say, we're going to just log out a message that the data is too large to encrypt, this should say. But in a more sophisticated example, you may take the actual data that you need to encrypt and break it up into smaller portions, each accommodating the maximum buffer size. So next, once we get through that process, what we're going to do is we're actually going to call a method from their certificate key and trust services to do the encryption. And that method is going to be the sec key encrypt method. The first argument that we're passing here is the public key that's being used for encryption. The second argument here is indicating that our padding is going to be using PKCS1. Our third argument is the data that we're going to be encrypting followed by the fourth argument, which is going to be the length of that data. Remember, we set up all these variables a bit earlier, and our fifth and sixth arguments are going to be our cipher buffer. So that's where our encrypted data is going to be placed once the operation is complete, followed by the address of our cipher buffer size variable. Now, when we call this sec key encrypt method, it's going to return to us an OS status. We're saving that in a variable status, and we can check that to see if there were any errors in the encryption operation. So in this demo, we're just going to check to see if the status was no error. And if we didn't have any errors, then we know our data has been encrypted 
using the public key. So what we're going to do is just save the encrypted data in our NS data instance variable encrypted data so we can have easy access to it going forward. You can see to get access to the encrypted data, I'm going to reach into the cipher buffer, which as we discussed is where the encrypted data is actually going to be once the operation is complete. So that's really the end of the process of encrypting some data with the public key of an asymmetric key pair. You can see again in our view did load, we're first going to create the key pair and then we're going to call our encrypt message function. So let's go ahead and run this and see what things look like in our iOS output once the simulator has had a chance to execute this code. So once the simulator comes up, I'm then going to be able to focus in on my Xcode output at the bottom here. And you can see I get my message here that the data was encrypted using the public key. So at this point, it's secure. And the only way to decrypt it is by using the secret private key.